Okay, one of the discoveries that emerged out of uh, <coughs> modern quantum theory is that uh, so-called empty space isn't really empty at all. It's actually full of energy. So instead of being like kind of a quiet, empty lake, it's more like the froth at the base of a waterfall or something. And this energy is basically electromagnetic in nature. And uh, <coughs> the energy density is uh, quite high. In fact, it's so high that when it was first discovered mathematically, it was thought to be some kind of artifact of the mathematics. But then as time went on, there were even Nobel Prize winning experiments that showed that this energy in so-called empty space was really there. We don't usually notice it because um, it's so homogeneously distributed. It sort of be like sitting in a bathtub with, uh, at exactly your body temperature. You might not notice, notice the water. But under certain circumstances, it can be um, disturbed or perturbed, and then it has, has effects. As I mentioned, some, some effects on atomic emission, for example, is what eventually ended up uh, in a Nobel Prize for Willis Lamb of Yale University, and it's called the Lamb Shift. And this is a recognition that, in fact, uh, this energy disturbs atoms. So atoms aren't sitting in a void. They're sitting in the sea of energy. So once uh, quantum theorists realized that energy was there, the next question was, well, <coughs> is there any way to tap it? And it was thought uh, originally that probably not. It might be like trying to tap the heat energy around us. And uh, you can quickly prove for thermodynamic reasons that uh, it'll take more energy to tap it than you'd get out of it so you don't come out ahead. But back in uh, about 1984, a researcher at Hughes Laboratory by the name of Robert Forward uh, showed that there was a particular effect called the Casimir effect, which demonstrated that, in fact, this energy could be tapped. Well, when you go to look at the numbers, you find out that there's enough energy in the volume of a coffee cup to, say, evaporate all the world's oceans if you could get at all of it. So this raised the issue among uh, <coughs> theorists, well, can we manipulate this energy uh, could we a tap it for space flight application, for example? And um, there are a couple ways to go. Could we get propulsion out of it? Could we use it as an energy source? And so these are the areas that modern theorists are looking at. But one of the more interesting aspects is that if, in fact, it does look like there's a route from here to there, then you know we consider the possibility that, well, maybe there are other civilizations who've been down this track ahead of us. And so it opens up the possibility that you can't reject the possibility of, for example, ET visitation out of hand.